Excuse me. Brother Andrew here. I took a couple hour break. Uh, we've come back from California now. I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and had a vision of the dove. I don't know how many other of you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that way and can say you had a vision at the same time. Uh, I've spoke to a few other brothers and sisters and uh, they never mentioned that to me as being their experience, but like I've said to others, okay, uh, doesn't seem like we talk about that period of time when we actually are received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We don't seem to share that too much. I don't know why, but uh, that's when it happened to me. So, and then like I've already shared in another tape, my brother-in-law, out of the blue, just ended up there in town. And uh, next thing you know, I'm on my way back to Toledo. And then I've also shared with another tape that after I was there, I was questioning the Lord. And then I got the, you know, the answer uh, coming around that corner. And there's that great big sign. And I'm wondering if it's really God in my life, you know. Uh, and uh, what's that advertisement say? It's, I am. So I never really bothered to ask the Lord about that anymore. Excuse me. Anyway, other than a uh, whole oh, real hunger and thirst to study the Word of God, I mean, I was driven. I was obsessed. Day and night, night and day, I just could not get enough of reading the Word of God. So uh, I ended up getting married. Uh, you know, I thought I needed a wife. Yeah. Like I've, ex I think I've explained that already. I, what I really needed to was to uh, get delivered from the lust of the flesh. Uh, but nonetheless, I ended up getting married, thinking that uh, instead of going to hell, uh, it's better that I'd be married. <laughs> if you're thinking that way, you need to go get some help. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Uh, getting married ain't going to change that. So anyway. Uh, I think I've shared too that I started off in a fundamental church and was pretty dead. Ended up in a full gospel church, but as my uh, testimony has been up to this point and will continue to be, I never really entered in, although I was interested in what they were doing. Speaking in tongues, the healings and stuff like that, because I'm reading the Word. And I ain't reading nothing at that point that would suggest to me by faith that we shouldn't receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus Christ yesterday and today and forever, He's the same. Alright? So why would God be different for me than He was to them back then? What makes them more special or more important? I know a lot of people think, well, the gifts were for establishing the church. Well, brother, the church has been being established here for 2,000 years. When, when, by the way, did, 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 did the establishing of the church end? <laughs> the workmen in the ninth hour got sent out 2,000 years ago, and as far as I know, there ain't been no call for them to come back. <laughs> All right? So they're still out there in the highways and the byways, compelling people to come in through the signs and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, you might not be, but that's on you. Okay? Faith believing people out there are still doing it and believing by faith in those things. Now there is going to come a time when that does end, and that's when the elect workmen of the eleventh hour, which are about ready to come forth, uh, come forth. So that ain't this isn't about that, and I've already shared in that tape uh, a tape about that. This is about this testimony of a witness uh, before God and man, uh, just exactly what way I was brought up and what. I was brought up for. So, I'm maturing in the Spirit fairly quickly. I'm advancing uh, ahead of my peers in the study and understanding of the Word of God. There are people in the full gospel church, uh, like my friend's uh, mother and uh, brother, who are wondering how I'm able to understand things that I, apparently he had been teaching or sharing with them. And... Uh, well, he just told me it's in the Word. <laughs> you know, that's where it was. 
But uh, I was really blessed by God to uh, to really, uh, well, like I said, when I read that about Jesus teaching us that we had no need that a man teach us, I believed that. I received that by faith, and because I did receive it by faith, that's exactly who it is that's discipled me. I was discipled by Jesus Christ. Now, if you can find a teacher better than him, let me know. I'll be more than happy, but I don't think you're going to. So anyway, that explains why I grew as quickly as I did, spiritually speaking, in the understanding and in the revelation, because he's the revelator. He's the one that shared that with John. So he's sharing it with me. Same time. I'm starting to see and understand things about the Old Testament types and shadows, okay, within the first three years of my, of my uh, being discipled by Jesus, that most people, okay, who are my peers in the... Well, I had to come... I came to the conclusion very quickly that they were not matured enough in the Spirit of God and in their understanding that I could continue to grow from them. So within a short period of time, a little more than a year, I was out looking for another fellowship. I needed one more mature, had been in the Word for a longer period of time. I could listen to hear what they're saying because I'm hearing what God's saying to me and what I'm learning and understanding. <laughs> the people around me ain't got the foggiest idea of what I'm talking about. So, Lord willing, uh, right out my back door, about a couple miles over there in Erie, and uh, my sister Peg and them, they'll be listening to this if they happen to get on the YouTube. And, uh, I love you, Brother John and all you folks out there. That's as close to a fellowship of and end that I, that I came. With all of my heart, I wanted to be a part of that ministry. But, unfortunately... That was the one I, I had to be rejected from. It was the work of God. Sons and daughters of God are crucified outside the camp, and that was my camp. If there was a camp, that was my camp. But I was never received. My ministry was never received. There were things that took place. And uh, during that period of time, there were dreams I had. I, had a vision one time. I'm going to start sharing that. And it had to do uh, with uh, the kids. I was married and uh, had a couple of younger. Uh, they weren't my children. They were her children. But nonetheless, they were mine. Okay? They were my responsibility. I was a stepdad. and There wasn't no work back there. Okay? In 79, I think we got married in uh, yeah, 78, 79. Wasn't no work nowhere, man. I mean, there's 300 people standing in line for a dishwashing job, okay? Anyway, it was winter time, and uh, I needed to come up with some meat for the winter to feed these kids. I needed some food. I went and got my hunting rifle from my mom. She had a 30 out 6 with a scope and all that good stuff. And uh, I was going to go with the in-laws up to a cabin they had up north in, in Michigan, you know. So, uh, before this tape runs out, and uh, I'd like to be able to finish the story, but on the way up there anyway, I was kind of half awake and half asleep. And I had this vision. And I've spoke, told this to my brother and my sister and other people before. I really needed that meat, and I was really in prayer to God. It was, you know, a by faith thing. This is getting ready to stop in about a minute, so I think I'm going to finish it on the next tape. But anyway, I got a vision of a place. Snow was coming down. There was a branch going across my eyes. As I looked up, there was a hill there. There was snow on the ground, snow coming down, this branch across my face, and a hill. I found that place. It really existed. And this was a vision I had had, half asleep and half awake, going up there. And I'll finish it on the next tape. Wait until you hear this one. Amen? Wait until you